This video is going to demonstrate how to take the frame uh, in the frame generator and make a drawing out of it uh, so that I've got a drawing with balloons and a bill of material and then a separate sheet that has individual part files of each of the frame members as necessary. So I've already got my skid completed with all the different parts. You'll see that the parts are listed over here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that I need to do now is make sure that you save this and you can create your drawing. So I'll make sure that I'm saved here and say OK. And now I want to create my drawing. So we'll go to uh, File, New, and I'll pick my drawing file and we'll create our drawing file here. I'm going to just do start off by creating just an isometric to, to put maybe balloons around here. So I'll say our base view is going to be that, but I want it to be a nice isometric view. And because we have lots of room, I'm going to make this like, say, a quarter size here. So it fills up the screen and, and looks nice. OK, so there we go. Uh, once I choose OK, it creates a drawing of that frame. Um, if I zoom in there, you can even see that it's got the gaps in there for all of where our welds are going to go. It, you can see our gaps for our, uh, our frame members and that kind of stuff. So it's it's really a nice situation. It, it really represents it well. If I want to put in balloons for each of the different parts, that's very easy to do. You just go to, well, let's save this. Again, it is an Autodesk product, so I'm going to save this. And I'll call it skidframe.drawing. If I go to annotate and I say I want a balloon, um, I'll just do the auto balloon. And the view that I want is this one here. Give me the view. <clears throat> select. Let me cancel this and start it over again. Auto balloon. Select the view set. There we go. Add my components. I'm just going to say I want all of these. So I'll just make a window and select them all. And then say... Uh, select my placement. I want them to go, uh, let's put them around it so that they're all kind of spread out around a little bit. Something like this perhaps. And you go, oh, well that looks like crap. Yeah, it does, but we can fix it. So we'll choose OK and OK. And so now what I can do is I can move these around so that they actually make sense. So, you know, this one needs to come, you know, maybe up here so that it lines up with that. OK. And then this one here, um, I would think that that would show up better over here. So I'll move this one over here. And you, the only the only thing you got to be worried about when you move the arrows is to make sure that you're actually touching the object so that you get uh, an arrowhead back here instead of the dot. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, this is the, the this piece here. So I'll bring this down here like this and. Make it so that it actually points at the object that we're dimensioning. Maybe I want these two to line up so I can make those two line up like this. Okay. And then these two are all right. They just need to be repositioned a little bit. So we'll put that one, say, there. And we can move this one out. And do something like so now we've got our balloons in place. The only thing that we need to do now is add a uh, part. Now you might be thinking, first of all, it's got this one here, part number two, but there's actually three of those, one, two, three. Why didn't it put balloons on all three of them? Uh, the program recognizes that all three of those have the same size and shape, so it only put one of them in. We could put the other ones in if we wanted to, but it would be redundant. So in order to put that parts list in now, we can just go to the parts list. I'm going to, again, I'm going to save it to make sure that we're good to go here. And I'll say, let's put this parts list in. I'll pick the view that I want. <clears throat> and then uh, I can just come in and say, okay, that looks good. And where do I want it to go? I'll put it in that upper right hand corner. So if I zoom up on this, and you'll see here that, okay, uh, item one has a quantity of 120 inches. Um, that doesn't make sense. And then Here's my channel. It's an AISC, that's C 6 by 8.2. So it's 6 inch channel, 8.2 pounds per square foot. And it recognizes that it's actually only 60 inches long. But it's got an issue here with the quantity, and we'll fix that in a minute. Okay. And then same thing with the number two. There's three of them. Okay. Three times 24 
is not it's it's a little bit here so it's off a little bit but it's you'll see why it's because this was the base size and then when we trimmed it down it made it actually made it a little bit shorter so that's why that says 70.425 but we don't want that to say that there we actually want it to say something different so in order to make this say what we want it to say um, what we really want here is we want the item number and then how many of them there are which is a different type of quantity and then you could say a length for example and then it'll have part number and description so to change this parts list you just come to anything on here and double click and it brings up the uh, the parts list you know the the dialog box here and the first thing we're going to do is on this first button over here we're going to say column chooser okay now if I look at this I don't want this one called quantity because basically what it does is it just adds up the linear quality or how many how much there is total and you know while that might be helpful it's not help for, helpful in the way that I want it so I'm gonna say I don't want this one but instead I want one that's gonna tell me how many there are okay so I'll click on here and the one that I don't want is this one quantity so I pick it here and I'm gonna remove it but the one that I do want has a different name okay so if we look through the list here um, <clears throat> if I choose base quantity okay and I add that one and I'll move it up so that's where we went if I choose okay and then okay you'll see here that the base quantity now is 60 okay which um, <clears throat> looks like the length okay it's it's 60 inches long and, and that makes sense so this one is actually the length that we want, but it's not giving me the number of them. So we're closer to what we want, but that's not exactly what we want. So going back to column chooser here, uh, if I keep moving down here, um, the one that we want here is item quantity. So if I pick that one and add it in there and I'll move that one up and choose okay and then okay, you'll see, aha, here we go. So the item number one, there's two of them it has a length of 60 inches okay that's the part number and then the u-shape so now we've got something that actually makes sense for a parts list uh, this one right here has a lot of extra numbers that we don't necessarily need so we can just come in here and we can just get rid of all of those extra ones that we don't need by just hitting the delete key like that and then say okay so now this makes a little bit more sense for our parts list however um, item makes sense this one doesn't need to say item quantity we just want it to say quantity and then this one here we don't want to say base quantity we want it to say length okay so in order to change those you just again double click on it and then item quantity uh, click on the ch on the on the column here and then right click and choose format column and now I can change this to just quantity so QTY so I'm overriding that and then for base quantity again um, I can come in here and I can format this one and I want this one to say length again so that it just makes a little bit more sense as far as uh, what this parts list is supposed to be and there we go so now you know somebody could look at this and they could say oh well what's part number two okay well part number two <clears throat> part number two is this six point so, you know, C6 by 8.2 24 okay and there's supposed to be three of them okay if I wanted to I could give that a different name or whatever but that seems to be pretty good okay now if I want to make individual drawings of these parts that's again something that's very easily done here in inventor so I'm going to save this I'm going to add another sheet go up to skid frame in the browser right click and choose new sheet so it's going to add another sheet so this i'm going to show you how to put a couple of different views in for example so if i say okay let's come in here now and place a view uh, the view that i want is not this view okay but it's going to be the part of one of those parts so if i hit the little browse here to look inside remember it created a folder for all those sub uh, sub parts so i'll say it's in that skid frame it's in here and then now here's where you just kind of have to know the names so for example <clears throat> I had long side one long side two short side one short side two okay that's the reason I named these is so they'd be easier to find a little bit later so I say okay there's the long side one and it's a C channel like this so I'll say open that um, 
But now I don't want it. I don't want this view. Uh, I want maybe a side view, you know, so I can see inside of here. So I'll turn it like this, and I'm going to change this to a quarter and a size like that. So there's my side view, and then I can put the end view there, and I'll just create those just like that. So here's my end view of my channel. Okay, here's my open view. Uh, the the issue that I have with this is. You know, it, you don't see the open end here. You kind of expect to see a line here because this leg sticks up. And it doesn't show a line because it's tangent here. And this isn't perfectly vertical, okay? It's, it's sloped and then it's tangent here and tangent here. So in order to solve that, what I suggest you do is just right click here, edit the view. On the display options, you can choose show those tangent edges and choose okay. And then you get all the tangent edges and I can come in and I can delete the ones that I don't want. So I don't want that one and I'll hold the control key or these two inside ones. Right click and turn the visibility off and do the same thing here. So I don't want that one and I don't want that one and I don't want that one. Right click, turn off the visibility. So now I get something that looks like, you know, the channel length itself, right? Um, and I can come in if I need to and I can dimension this and say that that is 60 inches long you know so that you can put a dimension on there and somebody could actually you know build this part okay now if i want one of the other ones one of the short ones with the notches taken out of it it also has those in there as well so i'll come in and i'll say okay let's place another part i'll place it up here so i want another base view uh, this time <clears throat> i don't want that long one but i'll say how about the short side okay and we'll say open that one and again i don't want that view but i want this one that has the open side and i'll put that over there and let's make it also a quarter scale so that it matches okay our quarter size and we'll say okay and again it's nice to have those lines in here so we know that the legs showing towards us so i'll say edit this view turn those dis tangent lines on on there and again, I only want this one. I don't want those two. So I'm going to say take those two and this one and turn the visibility off. And the same thing here. Take those two and this one and turn the visibility off. So we get our legs sticking up. Over here in this other side view, I don't want any of these. So I can just take and swipe all of those and turn the visibility off on those. Okay. Um, so now, and again, we could come in and I could say, okay, what's the dimension from, you know, from there to there and it's 23.48. That's the overall length. And that's why, you know, when you add, we multiply that times three, it's 70 and a half or whatever it happens to be. That's why that one was a little bit off when we expected it to be 72. So the last thing you might want to do is add, you know, names to these so that people aren't saying, well, which part is this, you know, because remember, if we go back to sheet one, <clears throat> say, okay, if I come back to sheet one, you know, part number two, it's AIS, you know, AISC C6 8.2-24 had that part number, okay? So if I want to have that part number on here, you can do that. Again, you just right click on here, choose edit view, and it says view four, <clears throat> And it's got, um, let me edit this view, right click, edit view, okay. It calls it view four, but the light bulb is off. It's not on. So if I want that view four to show up down here, I'll just say, okay, turn the light bulb on and okay. And now it says, ah, view four scale is a quarter. Well, that makes sense, but I don't want this to be called view four. I want it to have the name of this, this part here. So in order to fix that, you just double click on, the text and then this right here view four is a property you know all the properties are kind of held inside of these greater than and less than symbols here okay that's not the one that i want so i'll just hit a backspace on that one the one that i want for this one is a model property it comes from the model itself and then the property that i want is um the not the description that's the uh u channel and I don't want the file name because the file name would have an IPT at the end of it. A file name would actually be a, a, a good idea if it didn't have the IPT. 
because it would be called short leg or short side, you know, one or short side two. But the one that I want actually is down here as part number. So after you pick part number here, you have to hit this button to add that parameter. So now it says part number there. I can say OK. And so now it's got the same name here as you would expect it to have, you know, on the other page. And again, I could do that on this one. I could just right click on here, say edit the view. Um, I want to turn that visibility on. OK, but I don't want it to say view too, so I'll double click there. I'll get rid of the word view here and then I'm going to change it from view label properties to model and then drop this down and I want the part number there <clears throat> gotta remember to hit the little add the parameter and then OK and so now the name there matches the same name that's on the uh, part number <clears throat> on the first page and you could do that for all of the parts that you need to so this concludes the video on how to create drawings for your frame.